hi guys welcome to our channel on this channel we'll be sharing valuable information that will aid your study abroad journey today we'll be sharing the canada mb experience with tolu arobomati in this episode he shared how he got a scholarship to study for an mba at queen's university so turn off all distractions and enjoy don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos thank you yeah no i think i think the, the key thing is to also remember that like um when they're coming a lot of what you need to remember is why you're coming um because as, as you go through an mba program and even if, when you embark on any journey that is long and tough you okay. will sometimes want to stop you'll be like honestly what am i doing um hello hi good afternoon good afternoon yeah welcome, welcome. to you welcome thank you yeah, good afternoon to all your participants and um, welcome. Thank you for joining in. So it's good to have you here. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I'm Bolu and um, I'll be answering this session for today. Um, we have quite a couple of questions for you to do and we're also eager to hear your experience and how we all went to you and to know everything we can know about it. So, um, I don't, I think we we'll just we we'll just start now. We have a couple of people joining in already, so we we'll just we we'll just kick it off while others are we expect others to join him. Is that fine? Hello. Sounds good to me. All right. Hey. Okay. So, welcome to everyone once again. Our guest for today is um, Tolu Arogomati by name and he's a MBA grad from Queen's University. He'll be sharing his experience with us about the MBA journey in Canada and I hope we'll learn one or two things from him. So Tolu, you have the floor. Oh, and oh, go ahead. Thank you very much, Bolu. Um, nice meeting you all again. Uh, so on my side, it is morning. So good morning. Uh, I'm sure it's, it's afternoon in Nigeria. So good afternoon, guys. Yeah. Um, so in terms of who I am, so my name is Tolu Arugumati. I came to Canada 12 years ago and I have been here pretty much since. In terms of my journey to the MBA, I did an engineering undergraduate um, program at Carleton, which is also in Canada. I worked for three years as a software developer. And then I decided I wanted to go into product management and the MBA was the best way to pivot into that. So I went to Queen University for my MBA. And when I did that, I came out, I worked at IBM. Um, so I worked at IBM for another three years after that. And currently I work for Sportsnet as the biggest broadcaster in Canada. Um, I lead all the mobile apps at Sportsnet. So that's my journey overall. Now, if we you know, narrow it down back to the MBA. Um, so this was in 2018. Um, quite frankly, it is a, a, quite a bit of work because my MBA was a one year program. Um, I did not want to spend two years. This is personal to me. I did not want to spend two years doing the MBA. Um, if you are going to do an MBA, usually that means you're going to stop working. Usually, of course, you can take it part time as well if you'd like, but I generally recommend full time. So I did the full-time MBA. I finished that in one year and I was able to return to work after the one year. My program, um, the way it works, of course, you have to apply. There's a ruling application. Um, you write the GMAT, you write your letters of you know reference and what have you, and your interest, letter of interest. You have your references available as well, written, and they'll check with them. And then obviously they apply with everything you have. If they accept you, certainly, uh, in my own experience as well, once they accepted me, I got a scholarship. And obviously, I'm going to break this down slowly as we go along, but I'm just going to give you a quick overview and then we'll break it all down. So I got a scholarship of around $15,000 and I had to find a way to pay off the rest of my school fees and obviously living expenses. I got into the program in January. So we started from January all the way down to obviously December is a one year program. So while I was in school, I wrote a blog, which I was keeping everybody as I knew aware of what I was doing. I had a blog where I was writing everything I was going through, my experience in the MBA program. And by the time I was done, 
somebody I knew had seen everything I'd been writing <clears throat> on my blog and was like, like um, I think you'd be a great fit for us. Come and join us, essentially. And so the program, of course, like I'm going to share at some point was very, was a lot of work, intensive. Um, you have to focus, uh, forgo a lot of turn up, but it's okay. Um, so I finished and when I was done, obviously I came out and I was working at IBM um, and it's been a great journey since. So that's just a quick summary of everything from start to finish in terms of the MBA program. A quick summary and of course I'm sure we'll, I will go into them step by step throughout the Q&A. So uh, that's the quick spiel on everything MBA at a high level. And so now I'm ready to start breaking it down. Where do you want me to start, Dolu? All right. Thank you, Dolu. So for our participants that are just coming in, welcome. And we have Tolu Arugumati here. He's a graduate of Queen's University, an MBA graduate, and he's here to share his experience with us. He just took us through the overview of how his journey started, he finished from Carlton University, and then went ahead to further his um, degree at Point University, and he also mentioned how he got a scholarship and everything. So it's going to give us a breakdown of, of how everything went. So I hope we sit back, take notes, and then also pen down our questions. So, all right, so I mean, you can pick it up from okay. So you finished from Carlton University. You didn't study a business related course, did you? No, I did not. No, I did not. So it was completely engineering. Okay. And so afterwards, then you. You had, okay, so let's say it came upon you that, okay, this business engineering is not going to be what you want to proceed with, right? Correct. What influenced that? Like, were there things that you saw while doing your undergraduate program that made you to be, okay, I think this is where I should be. This is what I should proceed with. This is what I should do. Can you share that with us? For sure. I am happy to share. So when I was in school, I always felt like, you know, I met a few business people and I always felt like this thing is not hard, right? And if you remember, <laughs> if you remember in Nigeria, when we're growing up, a lot of, a lot of times, if you were in business, they almost made business seem like as if business is not something you study, business is something you do. Yeah, so, I think I just, right, it's something you just figure I out. That long so I always felt like in terms of doing business, I can always come back to it. Okay. Um, and I wanted to be focused in technology anyways, so I was like, okay, if I do a degree in business, I can't say I want to be in technology specifically. I, that was my understanding at the time. Okay. And so when I did the engineering thing and I was working, I would just always, I would just always check like, okay, why, well, how does this make money? You know, you write code, you do all these things, but how does it make money? <laughs> so that was my curiosity, right? I'm paid well for sure. But I don't get to see how it is turning into money. How do people pay for this? How do we price it? Things like that. Right. So I spoke to my VP at the time and I was just curious. You know, hey, I'm just curious. When you talk to a customer, do you charge them? When this is happening, what happens? All these emails, you know, things like that. Yeah. And so later on, like soon enough, when I was asking all those questions, he just pulled me aside to tell you, come, come, come. You are always asking some questions that, I mean, it's not like as if, is wrong what you are doing. I'm just telling you that I pay you to be a developer, right? <laughs> right, good for me. But you are asking questions as though you are interested on the business side. And if you are, then it is it is in your interest to maybe go and study something business related and bring it back to technology. Because now you've seen the other side of actually how we deliver what we deliver. And maybe once you've learned the business side, you can come back and do the other side where you understand how we charge for this, how you run a business on this. And so, because I was always curious from the business perspective, just like, hey, I'm curious to this world. So, come, the other day, you also cannot work on this thing because some, somebody had not paid something. Why? I can't do it now. It's not taking more than two minutes. But you see, those kind of those kind of questions, when you ask them sufficiently, people will, will, will ask you, okay, maybe you are interested in something else. And so, soon enough, um, he was like, okay, okay, I'll, if, you, if you are interested in going to do business, unfortunately, we cannot help you pay for it but you know if you go i'm sure someone will hire you because you are very interested in this like literally unprovoked you are coming here to be asking all these questions so i think from that perspective with the manager that was willing to give me the awareness of okay go and check this out go and check that and they pointed me in the right direction as well 
And so with all that in mind, that's why I was like, okay, maybe I should go and do the MBA thing. I was always interested in figuring out all the money side, all the business side, how can we charge more customers, which one is worth charging for, which one isn't. And so um, that was always my interest. And so that's part of how I got to do in the MBA. And so that's between choosing to do the MBA. Um, yeah, so that's just the choosing part. I guess we'll move now, I guess, into how do you pick a school? So how do you pick a school? Again, because I knew what direction I wanted to go, it was easy for me to narrow down, or at least to start looking for places that align with where I'm trying to go. Okay. Sometimes you don't have to know exactly where you want to be. So in my case, I was in technology, but I wanted to be on the business side of technology. Okay. Some people want to do, for example, finance. Some people want to do investment banking. Some people say, okay, no, I want to be a consultant. Some people will say, actually, I just want to be a manager. Somebody just wants to be a CEO. Somebody just wants to enter C-level. So those types of directions, again, you don't have to know it is Amazon I want to work for or it is Google I want to work for. You don't have to know those things. But that one is relatively, you know, by chance. So I knew the direction I wanted to go. I didn't want to be in finance. I didn't want to be in consulting. I was open to finance. That would be fine. I would think about it. If it's a company that's doing technology with finance, I would be open to it. But that's not where I really want to be. So, I look at a bunch of schools. Um, Location-wise, I want to stay in Canada, number one. I'm a citizen. At the time, I was a permanent resident. So, it makes sense and there's a tax advantage to being in Canada. Uh, number two, I don't want to move too far. I'm already in Canada. Um, the US, I would be open to it, but they'd have to give me a significant scholarship for me to move. Um, I also, at the time I was, uh, in a relationship, so I didn't want to be too far from my partner at the time. So if you think about it in all those different ways, it seemed like, uh, you know, the best places to look for was within Canada at that time. And then maybe some schools near Canada. So, um, I was open to like a New York, which is very, very close. It's not very far. I was open to things in the East coast. So some of them Duke university as well. So those schools I was kind of interested in, I'd be okay to that. Aside from now picking the location, the next step was what type of school do I want? So there are some schools that are very oriented towards technology. There's some schools that are very oriented towards consulting. There are some schools that are very oriented towards finance. And so you have to now start doing the research on which schools are strong for what. Seattle, there's a school in Seattle, University of Washington, their MBA is very, very technology focused because they're in Seattle, Microsoft is there, Amazon is there, Boeing is there. So naturally, the companies that are there are almost exclusively um, technology focused. So I looked at that one. Um, in Canada, there are three top schools you want to apply to, the three top ones, University of Toronto, Queen's University, Western University. So those are the three top in Canada. Then yeah. by brand name as well, McGill in Montreal is also a big school. And then also there's this school in Toronto as well called York University. So York Schulich is also another one. So those are the five really, the big five. Everybody else is usually trying to enter or around it. Uh -huh. So I looked at those five again. So now I've got the five I want in Canada. I've got some others from the US that I would maybe stretch, maybe fit in camp. Okay. Yeah. So I looked at all of them and I was like, okay, Queens is the closest to me. University okay. of Toronto is in Toronto anyways. I can still reach it. It's not that far. Um, and then Western was the other one. So I reached out to all of them, literally just started reaching out to one of them. Like, hey, this is what I'm interested in doing. This is what I'm doing right now. This is where I want to go. What do you think? All of them have application advisors. All of them usually will have someone that will touch base with you just to figure out quickly what your application can look like and determine next steps for you. Okay. So I reached out to Quint first. I reached out to a couple of others as well as I went along. And they just said, okay, so here, what's your resume look like? They asked for my resume. I sent it in and they're like, oh, we think you'd be a good fit. Now I'll get to that resume part in a second. So resume CV, so your CV they asked for it and with all that they, were, they quickly made you know the, the preliminary like, okay we think you'd be a good fit you have three years of experience um experience coming into the mba matters if you have outstanding grades then obviously they will reduce it a little bit for you but experience is the biggest thing more than anything 
so i had experience already i had some um i had some community experience i had some volunteer experience i had run a condo corporation as well and then straight up they were like okay we think you'd be a good fit now we just need your cv we need some references let's uh gmat the standard things so i had to start studying for the gmat and getting ready to apply officially because now they knew who i was somewhat and it was not time to just apply officially um and so yeah from then on you know the the writing process i just want to quickly touch on the writing process all right so no way before you touch on the writing process i think we have um more people coming in so yes. i'll just like to introduce you i just carry them along so they know what we're talking about welcome to the big to our participants that are just joining in and thank you for joining in we have with us to do a little Matthew with an mba grad of Queen university he's just to share his experience with us and of course he's already doing that so i hope you try to fit in and uh, just get it from wherever you're picking it up from. there'll be time for questions and answers so should in case you've missed any part after you don't then we'll, we'll take your questions all right so totally can proceed awesome thank you okay so um when when i decided i was going to apply to queens and to mother schools the the first part was gmat the biggest thing you need to get out of the way is the gmat if you write your gmat this year you can use it up to four years after so if once you write your gmat everything else is just about specifically picking out a school you want to apply to so the gmat is the biggest problem you want to solve so i bought a course online um to learn how to write the gmat because it is a standard exam there is the systematic way to learn how to answer the gmat so i bought the course online studied it for i think three months and then i wrote the exam while that was happening in parallel while i was studying and writing the exam you have to also write your um, letter of interest and your letter of interest essentially is you telling them why they should admit you one why um why they should admit you to um, one number two why you want to be there and three why they are a good fit for you okay so so let's see that again the yes, letter so the of first interest. one is why they should have you all right why you are a good fit for them right and essentially the other part is why the two of you are a good team together so the way i wrote mine was essentially i'm going here here and here i think your school here helps me get there that's the way i wrote mine this is where i'm going your school will help me get there that's number one number two these are the other kind of people that have gone so i think i'm sorry let me let me me back to sorry so number one this is where i'm going number two this is the kind of person i am Okay. Okay. this is who i am this is what i try to do this, that, that, that. now number three other people like me have gotten there so i think because you help me want to help me get there who i am i think the two of us together can help us help each other get to what we're trying to go that's the way i wrote my mind so it seems like as if not only am i a good fit for you you're a good fit for me yes, and together we can go where we are going the mutual relationship exactly so that's the way i wrote mine i used a sports analogy when I did my own, I use sports. Part of the reason why is if you think about it from um, from a recruiter perspective, there are going to be thousands of applications, thousands, and everybody's going to be telling them how I worked in a bank, I worked in technology, I worked at Google, I worked at this place, I worked, and I'm a smart person. You're a smart person. You did a good school. You're one of the best in the country. They're going to read so many of that. So I, I wrote my own like as if I was an athlete. I was like, okay. So I feel at this point in my life, I'm still like in the early stages of training. And where I'm trying to go is like I'm preparing for the Olympics. I feel like with us together, we can train together so that when it's time for me to enter the Olympics, I can turn around and be like, you're my coach. And give you all the credit. That was the analogy I used throughout my um, letter. And I'm, I'm, I'll probably share it with um, people after. I'll share my letter with, with him after so you can take a look if you're interested. Yeah. But that was kind of how I wrote mine. Because you need to also be interesting. The thing about it, there's so many people that are going to try to enter the MD. Okay. Right? Not just the same thing, they're reading the same story over and over again. 
exactly like literally you that you are writing okay um i am i work at a bank i was like that's great no problem and they'll probably still pick you but there are so many other hundreds of people who are also working at a bank um so you have to talk about other things that aren't only the base I went to work, I mm. went to school. Every day thing that they would normally reach from every person. Exactly. So, you, number one, you have to write the standard and then you have to put yourself apart from everybody else in a way. If your thing is cooking, introduce it. Let people get to know who you are. If your thing is that I'm an entrepreneur, I've started 15 businesses, find a way to put it in your letter because that is important. It's very important information. If your thing is, I love to help in my community. I've volunteered, I do um, non profit work. I have a charity or I'm always, you know, spending my time in a charity, put it inside. Find a way to connect that into that story. Because what will happen is at the end of everybody applying, what they usually do, and I'm going to give you a backside because I've seen it now. So what will happen on the other side? Let's say you finish the application. Okay. No. You, you've been, up, um, you finish the application, there's an application committee. Okay. The admissions committee. That will look at everybody's file okay so let's say they're looking at Tolu's file now so let's say it's five of them on the admissions committee five of them will look at Tolu's file um they will look at my grades they will look at my work experience they'll look at where he's trying to go then when they look at the letter everybody will read it obviously beforehand and then you're not okay now it's time to everybody's going to make a case for so why you should or why you shouldn't come okay within the admissions committee all right now what you want to do is be memorable right because sometimes even if you don't make the first round what they'll do is after they'll go around again sometimes and say oh yeah what of the guy that was this kind of person because sometimes they have um sports right let's say they have 80 they're admitting this year or maybe 100 doesn't really matter the number, 100 for example there are top candidates maybe like 25 top candidates like this one no brainer must come okay so they yeah. accept 25. the next okay. round okay so our next 25 out of these ones, which ones were very good? They would ask, yeah, what of that guy that did? Because mm-hmm. now you have to stick in memory. What of the guy that did the charity work? I think I like that guy. Like, I mean, his grades weren't the best, but the charity work, we can we can work with that. Or that. the guy that's an Olympian. So in my school, it was a big deal. So people who are, who have gone to the Olympics, they go crazy for it. If you've done Olympics, if you have worked in the army, if you have experience with um, children, things like that. Like, like those kind of niche things there was even a guy that they were like they admitted because he worked in music in wow. music they were like oh this guy's in music okay again you want to be interesting where they're like wow. we've not seen anybody like this what is that like so you want to at least set yourself apart stand something. out yeah so that was how i used sports to enter my own because at the time i had for my old company i created their soccer team i created their jerseys i sold it um, I, I was doing a rental business as well while renting homes. So all those things I put it in, I found a way to put it inside. I told them my story separately and I made it consistent. All right. So those kind of things are how you will stand out. So now again, you have to do the basics. I'm not saying only talk about music. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Do the basics first. Like, okay, I went to try did all okay. these things. Then, then find a way to put that in. Exactly. So mm-hmm. I don't. By the way, I also do X, Y, Z. Just things. to make it interest, interesting. All right. All so right. that was my application process. And literally, when I did the GMAT, I was expecting a higher score because during the testing, I was scoring very really well. I scored like a 690 during test, 690, 670. And then when I went for the actual exam, I got like a 620, 620. And so in my mind, I was like, no, because I could, if I had like a 690 that was scoring, normally I would have gotten a higher scholarship. But with a 620, I was like, okay, well, I mean, uh, I guess I'll just get my regular admission. But I had done enough that they still gave me a scholarship anyways. And they were like, honestly, wow. so we want you here. Um, so come and join us. We think it's going to be a perfect relationship. And so that's how I got in uh, with a scholarship. A scholarship. And everything. Wow. Uh, so that's getting in. The other um, side too, you have to talk about who your references are. So let people know you're applying. So I told my VP, who had told me that you know MBA is for you or want to do business. So I let him know. Another friend outside of work, I let her know as well to use her as my reference. And so all these people knew I was applying. And so when it was time for me to send references to my school, I already knew who I was going to use as my references to check for me when I was applying. 
So mm. that's the other side as well to keep in mind. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Tolu. It's been an awesome time with you. All right. Let me welcome those that are just joining in again. If you are just joining in, welcome and thank you for joining us. We have Tolu Arugumati here sharing his experience, his Canada MP experience with us. And it's been awesome. I mean, taking one or two things from what he has said. So if you're just joining in, kindly sit back, relax, and join. enjoy the the experience <laughs> sharing <laughs> with us. All right. So and um, we've talked about how you how you had to navigate from engineering to MBA. At what point you decided that okay, I think this MBA thing is for me. Mm-hmm. You've also told us about how you selected your schools. What what are the um, the factors you use in streamlining your options and all of that? And now, okay, let me just also drop this. Tolu has mentioned something about GMAT, the importance of it in applying for MBA. So if you are on this um, Zoom meeting and um, you're considering your MBA, you should know that GMAT is compulsory and that Libre Education we have a ham a ham that takes part and that takes care of the exam exam part so you can either drop your number here so we reach out to you we have experienced tutors that can take you on the tutorial so that you come out with beautiful scores like tolu did and so that you can get scholarship because if you have high scores it give you chances of getting scholarship all right tolu so what part of your experience now so when you got got into school how were you able to now okay cope you know you're coming from a different background Looking at the courses you'll be taking, I mean, you didn't have an initial um, experience or initial background of uh, what business courses are like and all of that. So how was it easy for you to cope and adjust and stuff like that? Yeah. So um, one of the things you will find out with the MP when you get on the other side, most of them are, is if you grew up in Nigeria, where for us in Nigeria, we assume that math is hard. Right. Keep in mind, just to add context, for me, math in Nigeria was not hard. For me, right? Okay. <laughs> math in Nigeria was not hard. That's for you, but it's that, okay. for me. An average student. For the average student. person in Nigeria, right? Yeah. Math was, was relatively hard. Okay. Right? Yeah. When you get to the MBA, you will find out that business math is even easier than regular math. It's actually yeah. easier easier okay. because in, in in the business side and the mba side a lot of it is more about application than the actual math itself math. Okay. Okay. because at this point now excel is allowed it's the example so you don't even need to be knowing the numbers know the numbers don't. Just know the excel is allowed you can use calculator you can do all these things so now it's about application it's not really doing the math going on saying seven and you not be doing is it 15 is it 16 that's not the issue about that okay so when I got into the program, I always used to be afraid before that. I mean, I'm doing business. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of it is comprehension, so reading, a lot of reading, uh-huh. and then understanding where to use the math. So okay. that was my primary thing. So initially, I would study till like 9 p.m. every day. So class would start from 8 a.m. Okay. If you go to four, you have, and again, I'll get into how my own team was going, but 8 a.m. till four. You go and eat lunch, come back at six o'clock for team meeting, team meeting till seven. I will now study after from seven till nine. Me yeah. personally, that was what me I was doing. Me, I also liked business, as I, as I already shared. I was yeah, very yeah. curious. And this time, this is the first time in my life I'm paying my school fees out of my own pocket. Mm, so you have to know what you are doing. I was ah, <laughs> <home up. laughs> I'm more paying you. I will, know. So I will know it, so I'm telling you. So, because I was funding it myself, Omo, we're not playing again. <laughs> <laughs> so, you understand what it means now to take money out of ah, your pocket to pay. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Every money. And we're paying dollars, it's not Naira. So, Have you? <laughs> that place, no, you can no, 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 imagine, no. every dollar counts. Everyone. So, Omo, <laughs> I right. sat down. I, was, I must study this study. So, how did I adjust? Well, primarily, interest was number one thing. The second thing, of course, was also making that time to study it. And then the other side is now, there's now YouTube that's available. So literally, if there's any concept you don't understand, if your teacher didn't explain it well, YouTube did. Yeah. Right? So I'll Google it on YouTube or I'll YouTube it. I will look at all these courses online. Um, weekends, like other than 
like literally any time I had, if I was not going out quickly to play football, just like I can rest. I'm reading again. Okay. So that was the primary thing for me. Now I also had teammates. So when you come into the NBA, the cool side of it is networking, right? So me, I'm in engineering. I'm in technology. There's some technology courses in the NBA. Now somebody else will enter the NBA and they are business only. They've only done business. That's all they know. All right. So or someone has only done finance. Someone else has only done HR. Someone else has only done whatever, and they're trying to learn the remaining. So. When it's type of technology, ah, look my help me understand how to do this. When it's type of finance, guy, you've done this finance, yeah, yeah, please, yeah, please, I'm not understanding. What, why are we doing this thing? Like, for example, present value. It's, help me understand. What does that mean? What is future value? Help me understand. <laughs> so, that all, aside from your, you know, all your teachers, the YouTube online, you also have people that have you done have this. Your yeah. That's all they've yeah, done. Sure. So some people only know one side. So if you're doing finance, some people have only done only finance their whole life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. they're they're only done marketing. So your teammates and your classmates also knew. And so you can use them to, to teach you. So literally one guy, when he was about to go to an interview, he said, ah, Tolu, I've not done anything in technology. I'm interviewing for a technology manager job. So literally, I need a crash course on how to do technology, how to do sprints. Yeah. So literally, before I interview, I'm teaching him. So those kind of things will happen. And that's how you learn as well. You have to be ready to say, oh my, I don't know. Please, come and teach me. Yeah, of course. So, Human is an island of knowledge. Eh, yeah. So that was that was how i went about it and you know straight up asking people questions i'll go and see my prof i'm like, even prof because in nigeria right when you ask prof they make you feel like you're stupid for asking questions hey in canada ask questions like literally the profs have this thing called office hours okay so okay. they literally set time in their calendar where i'm in my office yeah. i'm waiting for you to have questions come just come in They'll give you they will let you know this is two hours today two hours this and they'll let you know the, the time if you want to come you're available like it doesn't cost you anything if you have time okay. for me send your questions ahead of time i will help you understand when you come um, i did not play i'm going in <laughs> office hour, I'm going. They will, uh-uh. uh. it's not cheap and i'm not playing i did not come here to be playing so, <laughs> I, went there, well. I went to office hours i met profs I will ask question online. I'll say, oh, by the way, I saw this article online. I'm thinking, is it related? Oh, yes, it I anything anywhere. Everything. You are just I, asking. You are just asking. Asking. I, I, I wanted to make the most I, of this I, I, I paid my money. You pay pay pay. Pay. <laughs> I paid my money. Where your parents were the one paying, did you make the most of it? Did you ask us? This money is close since money. Oh, really? <laughs> so when it's down to ah no, 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 this is my money now. Just see life, baby. So that was how that was literally how I adjusted. Right. And you know, you again when you're doing something you actually want to do yourself. Yeah. Um, and also keep in mind, winter in Canada. Let me just put side notes here. Winter in Canada is not a joke. All right. So if you're going to come here, to them, you cannot be playing and then entering cold and you will not study what you are studying. Or more. Yeah, sure. It will be worth it at the end because you know when you finish, you have a very you know comfortable life. But while you're in there, you know, you just think about it like, you know, I'm just training right now. I have to do what I have to do. Later on, you'll be able to relax. Like now, literally, even after this call, I'm traveling. So you can do and undo after. But that time when you're inside, go, go. Focus your focus. The yeah, enjoyment will come out. So. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Dolu. Thank you. Thank you. It's been, it's been an amazing time with you. So we have questions. People are already and um, the finals of their questions i think we should take the live questions that people that are here that have questions first before we take the compiled questions that we uh, that students have sent in so tito for me can you hear me if you can please unmute and um, let's have your question let's start with you tito for me hi hi tito. good afternoon good afternoon yeah all right so i um, want Oh, it's breaking. In the network, yeah. Hi, Bolu. It may be better for people to text in. Yeah. yeah, please type in your question. Type in your question. I would have taken it. Um, GMG Mats is compulsory. 
Sorry. Okay, so I'm just going to um, try to take it back one. So I think I heard is the GMAT compulsory. And I just want to hear, I think that was what I heard. So okay usually so sorry into my questions so you can right, check yes. in okay yes yes so we can see your questions all right yeah, so just what she's saying. yeah can you can see yeah. yes so some schools will accept gre instead of gmat okay some schools will um you just have to let the application advisor know that that is the case okay so whenever you are doing that some schools will explicitly state that they accept gre instead of gmat but you should touch base with the school's application advisor to be sure. So in my case, I did not need it because again, I wrote the GMAT. I wanted to solve any you know issue of applying to different schools. Some schools will take it, some schools won't. So I didn't want to write GRE and get to some schools and then they don't take it. And I write GMAT anyways. Okay. So it's so just was, better to be on the safe side. Exactly. That was for me. Now, if it is your dream school that you want to go to and they are accepting GRE, then that's fine. Then you can just skip it and do GRE specifically for them. So right. it depends on the school, but more, all schools take GMAT. GRE. Not all schools take. Yeah. All right. Okay. So Tito, for me, I hope your questions have been answered that way. All right. So there's another question in chat box. Chinwe Chinwe was asking, is MBA open to all to applicants in any discipline? Like since you were coming from engineering and you went to coming from irrespective of your background, can you? Can you further into yes. MBA? Yes, so uh, MBA is open to anybody. Um, you can be, even if from psychology, you can do um, law. There's a law and MBA combination, in fact. There is a doctor and MBA combination okay. if you want to do that. Um, you can come from health, you can come from music, as I said already. Yeah. You can come from literally any walk of life. I think MBA is one of those programs that is so open okay. to anybody that yeah. It is helpful as long as you have the interest and you are interested in you know doing the tough work to do it so mb is open to anybody um, anybody, okay. anybody can take it for sure yeah. tell me it's asking what is it like for the roi after studying an mba hey so return on investment i think that's a very <laughs> question and it's very it's a good one to ask especially when you're doing an mba and how much you are um asking for yes so now the way a lot of people do ROI is usually they look at the fees versus the income that they are making. I mean, that's fair, right? If you think about it that way, that's one way of looking at ROI. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'll, again, I'll use numbers. You can check this literally on my own Instagram, like literally. So between paying of going to school and um, my car and funding my life, I spent just over 100K between everything and the MBA program, just over 100K in dollars now. Okay. That's how much I spent. If you think about it from a spending perspective, I paid all that back in two years. Okay. After after your MBA? Yes, after I finished my MBA. So I was done paying it all in two years. Now again, this is literally, I spent 100K, I've gotten that money back, plus I'm still alive. So all the money that <laughs> I still need to be alive is still being paid. But that is yeah. being alive, plus I've paid everything back. Yes. Okay. So, okay. just for ballpark numbers, that already tells you that literally that means I already made at least that I could save 100k in two years, at least that I could also save. Okay, aside from my life yeah. and then yeah. the money I paid. So that was how much I already paid back. That's number one. So okay. that's my own example. For okay. the most part, a lot of schools usually, if you are if you are able to get one to one. Like, so if you spend 100K and you can make an income of 100K, then it's worth it. Yeah, sure. Because literally, going forward, it's only keep increasing, right? So your, your salary will only keep increasing. Yeah, so sure. that's how I use the math. If I can make back everything I spend in a yearly income, then I'm good. So that's yeah. my own way of doing ROI. Mm -hmm. The way I calculated it actually, though, was at the time, and this time I will give you all numbers because it doesn't really matter. So at the time when I was doing software engineering, I was making sixty thousand um, dollars a year. Okay. I went into the MBA program. My school fees was about eighty-three. Eighty-three. So essentially, I'm going for eighty-five or eighty-three, eighty-five. If I can make eighty-three, eighty-five, it's worth it to me. Okay. So I did the MBA program. 
my offer from IBM, I had three offers. Okay, let me let me get into it, but I, we'll discuss this somewhat later. I got three offers: Microsoft, IBM, and a bank in Canada. Okay. Okay. All of them offered at least eighty-five. At least this is base. Okay, and we'll discuss. That's your monthly income. No, that's for a year. Eighty-five k a year. Oh yeah. Okay. Eighty-five okay. k a year. Okay. So that meant for me, in terms of the return on the money, I was jumping from sixty to 85 immediately in one year okay yeah i already make one of that now i make almost twice that now almost not yet completely twice but almost twice now almost. so that gives you a ballpark of how it keeps increasing over time and that's now this is now 2018 till now three years so that gives you a sense of how it scales quickly yeah. okay so you need to accept that when if i if i stayed the software developer route maybe by now i'd be making maybe 100 by now maybe 120 maybe okay. but the mb has already moved that much faster already and so i will still beat that number but again keep in mind we do not know what i would have done as a developer because i'm no longer a developer it's yeah. very possible yeah. i'm going to work at facebook i'm going to work at amazon and those would pay like 300 k for developers those were crazy but again, <laughs> very possible. But again, similarly, I want to stay in Canada and Amazon and Co and Co don't pay that in Canada anyways. So, uh, because all the developers are in the US, is managers that they pay, Amazon pays managers here. So, if I want to work at Amazon, I can be making that kind of money in Canada, not in the awesome. anyways. So, that's kind of the return on money um, that you invest. Literally, as long as you're coming out, you can make exactly how much you pay at the bare minimum. You can always make more. Um, sure. Then it is worth it. So that's kind of return. I hope I've given you examples of how much. You can make. So, All right. I hope. Yeah. I hope Thelma is satisfied with that um, answer. Thank All right. There's also right. another question. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for asking. All right, there's another question here from Comfort. I think she was asking that why did you eventually choose Queen's University? I think you answered that in the course of the explanation. Yes. So, again, just to run it for those who may have missed it, um, Queen's was close to my, to where I lived. At, that it was team based. So, a lot of what you do with queens you do it with your team you have a team of people you always work with um and so i liked that concept and i wanted to try it out um there was also like one of the things you'll find when it comes to canada there are certain schools that when you go to them people just, just respect you whether whether you've done anything or not it just gives more respect I don't, I don't it's like saying you went to harvard mm. you went to harvard they don't need to ask you questions you know, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, okay you went to harvard okay cool like so we know you're smart. Yes, so you you get. <laughs> so yeah. here, aside from even the respect, there's also this thing of like a club. Right? It's, it's, it's unspoken. Nobody really mentions that the club. But literally, people who have also gone to the school, the alumni, okay. you've also yes. gone to that yeah. school. When they know you went to that, their school, they'll help you out. So of those schools, Western Queens do that very well. Well, literally, if you see, I went to Western, I went to Queens. Immediately, they were like, "Oh, I also went there. Come, 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 let's talk." So, literally, there's a lady at IBM. She and I were just working together, working. She was a VP somewhere in one corner of the, of the company. She heard I was on. I went to Queens. It's like, no way! I went to Queens too. Oh yeah, they come in, come. That's correct. They are with that spirit. And then they're just like, "Oh, Tolo, how are you doing? How are things?" Literally every three weeks, every three months now, she makes sure I, I touch base. How are you doing? How's your new job? Are uh, things okay? Do you want to come back? Do you need a job? So now, if I ever want to go back to IBM, I already know I'm, who I'm calling. Auntie, by the way, oh, I'm looking for a VP job now. <laughs> so again, I'm not going to use that now because I don't need it now. It's later when I want to start collecting, when I start charging them like 500k a year. Then I'll meet them by yeah, IBM. Can you come and bring me back? So <laughs> it's things it's like that. You, Realize that's part of why I went to Queen. Uh, alumni is really strong and people look out for you. Um, and that's, that's why I choose Queen personally. Um, but Western is also okay. as good for that um, in Canada. Um, okay. The University of Toronto is not as strong for that behavior, but those are the two uh, that really do that okay. really well. Uh, thank you. I think that's a tip for those that are here. I mean, that's a tip that you can <laughs> use while choosing your school. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. So there's an, oh, another another question from Telma. Telma is asking, can yeah yeah yes you can do MBA with political science. He has established the fact that MBA is for everybody, provided you're interested in it. So and you're ready to do the work. There's work. All right. So Telma is also asking again. Any idea on how M- MBA in the US is when compared to in Canada? Oh yes. Oh yes. Okay. So number one, the MBA is more expensive in the US. Number one. Okay. Um. Keep in mind also you're paying in US dollars. Okay, so when you're paying in US dollars, it's more expensive. Um, usually in the US, their yeah, MBA programs are two years. Now, usually the standard is two years. The standard. Okay. Um, so in the US, you are most likely to do a two-year program anywhere you go. Um, I've not really seen any school that did a one year the same way Western and Queens did one year. So I've not seen anybody else that does one year. The other side to it is life after the MBA. In the US, it can be difficult to get your um, permanent residence or visa to, to work. So getting a study, um, a work visa is, is, is not easy in the US. And as you know, that's the challenge. Canada, on the other hand, Canada wants people to come. They want you to be a resident. They want you to contribute. And Canada is a very welcoming society. The other side to it is, as I said, I'm going to the US today. So see this? In the US, racism is a bigger deal than in Canada. Okay. I already know as I'm traveling to the US today, I know this shit is going to cause trouble. In Canada, it is not. It is not. We okay. don't see the write up on the shirt very well. Oh, so the shirt says Black Lives Matter. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. So the shirt says Black Lives Matter. Now, as I'm going to. Trouble. As I'm in the US, I, I'm not disturbing anybody. I'm just wearing my shirt. But I'm willing to bet you this is going to cause trouble. Yeah. And it is known, it is known that racism is a bigger deal in the US than in Canada. It's just, it's clear as day. an established fact. Now, it, that's not to say there aren't people that are racist in Canada. There are. But even people who are racist also understand that it is not okay to do certain things. People who are racist will, will know that they are racist, but they won't say it. They'll keep quiet. They'll mind their business. They'll leave me alone. But in the US, people who are racist will disturb you. It is not, they will disturb you. It is guaranteed. I've been to the US enough times they will disturb you, okay? Police will stop you for no reason. It is known. Again, some parts of the US are not as bad, okay? I just want to make it yeah. out there as well. It's not as bad, but again, if you think about other things other than the schooling, you have to consider that as well. Now, again, the US obviously has more money. I, really, I mean, it's 300 million people compared to Canada, it's like 36 million. So naturally, there's more money there, more people. But from a quality of life perspective, in Canada, like literally, I don't like literally. I don't worry about being sick. Like if I'm sick, nine one one, I'm in hospital. <laughs> no bills, no nothing. I will go there, do do everything, and I will go home, peace of mind. In the US, you cannot be falling sick. Don't try it because it's expensive. It's expensive to be sick in that place. It's expensive to be sick. It's so, cheap to be sick in Canada. <laughs> so the don't other things. So if you think about all that, that's part of why I decided I'm going to stick to Canada. But again, in the US, if you have the money and you have the energy, which is also equally great. Like there are some places in the US that are wonderful. Like I said, Seattle is one great place. Um, if you get picked up by Amazon, Microsoft there, then you are set for life. You generally you'll be fine. Um, but yeah, compared to them, so like I said, just to so, recap, tuition is more expensive. The US by itself is a problem because we're black. Um, but the rest of it, you know, salaries there is all really competitive. Um, it is a nice, it's cheaper in terms of housing, it's cheaper to live in the US. Okay. Um, taxes are also lower, but for the rest of it, Canada is just nicer. Um, people are nicer here, people are more accommodating, there's more immigrants here. All of us are, are all learning, and everybody's more open and honest. People will teach you if you don't know anything about snow, people will, like, Oh my goodness, you've never seen snow, they will teach you everything that's you right. need to know. So, that's what yeah. my own choices. <laughs> So at the end of the day, your goals as an individual, what you're looking out for is what would determine yep. which location you're going to choose. Yep. Oh, last um, thing to add as well. In the US, everybody's scattered because the US is so big. So okay. if you are Nigerian and a Nigerian community is a big deal to you, if you're not going to Texas or a really populous place like maybe in New York, finding Nigerians is not the easiest. If you go to all these Arizona, you won't really find Nigerians like that. Okay. If you go to Kansas, Missouri, again, you can get there, but Nigerians are not really there like that. In Canada, if you come to Toronto, Nigerians stay. If you go to Ottawa, 
Nigerians. They say if a Nigerian community is also a big deal to you, being able to eat Nigerian food. is important anyway so i mean if that is your priority so you know what you're looking out for and it will help you streamline your options at the end of the day all right i think there's still another question here hi, someone is asking can okay hi people all right so thank you tolu just to interject yeah. a bit let's not lose focus on um that you know students from nigeria would have a different price point for the MBA, right. right? Tolu has, you know, been fortunate to go do his undergrad there, get a job and go to a top five school. But it's also be good to just touch on the fact that, you know, a lot of students probably just be able to avoid schools within the 28 to 40K CAD range, right? Yes. Um, yes. Which is still comparable right. to when it's good to LBS and things like that. So thank you. Exactly. A good um, I went to Queen and I did an MBA, it doesn't discount any other MBA at all. Right. So, for example, there's a school in Waterloo that I know about, I believe it's uh, Wilfred Laurie. Um, if you go to the MBA, at the end of the day, two of us are both MBAs. So when it comes to paying salary, you will still relatively get the same, relatively. The only challenge now becomes my own school will say, okay, they will go and meet the employer directly and they'll hire from my school. That's really the only difference. That's what you pay the extra for, right? So employers will come to me more likely than a Wilfred Laurier, but that's not to say if you apply, right? Yeah, you're not you apply, it will still be compared the same, we'll still interview the same. And then when it comes time to making an offer, they will not say, oh, you, you went to one school, you went to the other school, we'll not make you. You will still be able to end what I'm earning. Just to quickly, what's point? You still earn the same thing, but like I said, you have to work even harder than mine because my school has done a lot of the work for me. For you, because another school that you have to do more of the work for yourself. But again, if it's still the same. You still make more or less the same. You will be fine. Just FYI. So just adding that caveat. All right. So Yetzinde is asking, can we do MBA after years of being an entrepreneur? I think that's yes, a yes. Can. Yes, you can. There's, there's no. Um, being an entrepreneur is also even part of it. Like I said at the beginning, if you're an entrepreneur, put in that in there. You know, talk about the businesses that you started, some of them that have failed, some of the things you've learned. Um, there are people in that are entrepreneurs. Even me said, like, I I like I said in, before, like putting that sports thing when I said I sold jerseys, it showed that I had an entrepreneurial side. Yeah. So certainly if you have if you're an entrepreneur and you started businesses, you run businesses for years, for a couple of months, doesn't really matter. Just put your results and what have you, and it's there. So certainly more than happy with that day. Sure. Yes, okay. and just to just, I think I'll just touch in here as well. You would find that, like Tolu said, you know, there are people with different specializations coming to the MBA program. And I know that for a fact that we have a couple of partner schools that have MBAs with specializations. For instance, the University of New Brunswick has a MBA with entrepreneurship and innovation as one of their five specializations. So that will work. You know, if Tolu was going to a UMB from here, he would probably have taken their MBA in technology management with his prior experience. You know, they've got uh, international business, amongst other, I think, five or six specializations they have now. So that also, you know, is something to consider. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so Afala uh, Shadi is asking why Queen's University, you've answered that. And then she's saying, what's the rate of acceptance for international students? I don't think. Um, so I don't know the rates, but, but the acceptance is there. Like, um, come, when I went to Crowdsing, I was an international student. So that was my undergrad. Um, when I did the MBA, there were a lot of people there who were also international students. So I don't know what the rate or the percentage is, but they accept international students readily. Like literally I'm on the, so I'm on the alumni reach out committee when people, are, when people apply to the MBA at Queens. So if you were to apply to Queens, for example, the school will come and ask me about you. <laughs> so, just FYI. so that the reason why I'm able to share things like this is because I'm I'm now on the other side. Um, okay. So if they're like, oh, there's a Nigerian, and uh, what do you think? Or can you reach out to them, talk to them for us, um, things like that. I'm now on the other side. 
so, there's someone here who I believe is looking into pain. So you see how they can just connect. <laughs> so literally, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I know they accept international students. I know for sure we accept international students. Um, so that, but I don't know what the rate is. I don't. I don't get to see other applicants. It's just one. If you need to know their review process, yeah. you come and say, "Look, by the way, check this person out. What do you think?" <laughs> so, look, can you touch on the scholarship? Um, I know for a fact that also uh, we tell students when they come for consultations that some schools will tell you, if you get a six fifty in the GMAT, we may give you five thousand off. If you get the seven hundred. We may give you ten thousand to fifteen thousand off. What what do you know happened for you in in Queens? Yeah. So the the thing you think about is your your application is not is not just your GMAT, right? Now GMAT helps a lot because it is a quantifiable number, right? If you have seven hundred and above, you can get to any 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 MBA in the world. If you have seven hundred and above, any you can get it. So I would you know if you are sharp enough, go for it. If you can get seven hundred above, any school in the world will take it. Now. The other thing I also think about is, from the MBA program perspective, their rankings are also dependent on MBA on the GMAT as well. So every school publishes their average GMAT score of every student in the, in the program. So if your GMAT is high, you are helping them raise their ranking. If you think about it, so a high GMAT is also desirable for them. Okay. Now that does not mean if you have a high GMAT and you're an asshole, they will, they will let you in. Just okay. <laughs> so, okay. like it's not the only thing. It's not a be all end all, but it's a very, very simple number. You have seven hundred. You have seven hundred. Cannot argue. You have seven hundred. But if you've done, for example, volunteer work, if you've done charity work, you work with UN UNICEF. That in itself is like wow. You've done UNICEF. Okay. Who are you? You need. To, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So in my own case, I had done at the time. I had rented. I had bought homes. I was really, really young. So I had rented a couple of places. I'd already bought. I was teaching people how to do it as well. I was teaching people finances as well. I had a class I was actually teaching like in at Crowd University where I was teaching people how to save. Like why the mathematical reason for why you need to save. And not only save to invest, because if you don't, if you quickly, if you don't save, you're losing money. Immediately you don't save, you're losing money. This is not whether you spent or anything. Like literally, if you're making 100K every year, technically, if you're making 100K this year, next year, that 100K is only worth 90. Well, Average. But again, saving is important and I had a class, so I put that in there. Um, so whatever else you are doing is a reason for why they will give you a scholarship. And in my own thing, even at church too, I was also like a mentor at my church. So for all those community reasons, they gave me a scholarship in addition to my GMAT score. So GMAT certainly will give you numbers. If you're above 700, it will give you scholarships. Like I, I remember one guy had a seven. 710, 720, they gave him 50k. Do you know everyone? 720, 50k, please be coming. So, you know, because of your GMAT, they will give you numbers, sure, but it, it drops down as you get lower, if you get like 656, 80, they will give you scholarships now aside from that because of, of well, other things you've done. The program was a one year program, mm-hmm. especially for how about the internship you reached out in the one year program, especially for international students without Canadian work experience. Sure, so you need to keep in mind, right? If you're coming to any MBA, you already have work experience, right? So, if you got work experience, why do you need an internship? Because internship is usually just to get that first work experience to figure things out. So, how to work you are not an undergrad this is not your first job it doesn't really matter it doesn't change much like literally you will be able to do the job you can do the job you can do the job it's not by internship that's going to change that so i also had a bunch of friends who were international students who now like literally were all really close they didn't have internships either so they hadn't been to canada before and they got really well-paying jobs even more than me so it's the internship is sometimes overvalued. If you think about an internship, you are giving a discount to work. That's what an internship is because you are giving them a discount on your salary that you would normally take so that you can get some work experience. For me personally, I don't see the value in an internship if you can just go and get a full time job. 
I think an internship is a waste of your time personally. That's my own perspective. Yes. Me personally. Um, I think it's a waste of your time because you might as well finish your program and then go and collect the actual money. Like, why are you giving them discounts? It's because you want to put something on your resume. But again, that's my perspective. Some other people say, no, you definitely want something on your resume. It makes it easier to get a full time job. But for me, no. your options. For me, it was a waste of time. It doesn't change anything personally. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Dudley. Yeah. So, I think we have other questions coming. Um, I think there was one question before about what the um, GMAT program like. I use Kaplan, K A P L A N. So that was the one I used for my GMAT. Okay. Um, so you can also, I, 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 I saw the boss put Magosh um, and some other places. You can use those as well, any of those, Manhattan Prep, whichever you prefer. And also, you can also talk with Deepa. I think Deepa will probably help you out with that tutors as well. Yeah. That's what I used. I don't think you need to spend that much. Um, at the time, yeah, you just didn't have to go to school, so. <laughs> so, I was giving my best, so I don't, I don't, yeah, the tutor, as long as the tutor knows what they are doing and they can give you results based on what they've done, sure. Um, again, I've also tried to be a tutor in that thing. Quite frankly, anybody that can get a 690 can teach you everything you need to know. It's just about you doing the work. You need time to prepare for it more than anything else. So you don't want to wait until the last minute to do GMAT. I'm telling you, if, let's say you want to do MBA next year or this year, just work on your GMAT already. Okay. Get out of the way. Once you're done with it, you can always reuse the same score later. Okay, so so, it's valid for four years. So. Exactly, it's valid for a couple of years. So just finish it and be done with it and you can apply later. All right. Thank you, Dolu. So someone is asking about funding. Any ideas about funding for international students considering we don't have this money sitting in the bank? <laughs> And the yes. visa officers will not grant visa without points. Yeah, so I fully understand that you know, money is noisy. Even in my own case too as well. Um, I didn't have the money. They're, they're, and my father was not going to pay for that. Like literally, my father would do this thing where like, um, so my dad, you know, he, he appreciated me because he did his best to help me pay for undergrad. But the way my dad did, said it was, so Lou, you see, in this life, my job is to give you bread and butter. If you, you want jam, go and buy your own jam. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you I did make toast bread. Go and buy your toast. Go and buy your own, buy your own toast. <laughs> I give you, I give you bread. I give you butter. Anything as extra that you want, go and find your own. So, thankfully, he paid for undergrad, um, and then for my master, I had to sort it out. So, in my own case, and as internationals, there's this thing called. they offer loans to international students who want to study in MBA programs okay so Prodigy does that okay. there's also another one called Empower so M and then P-O-W-E-R so Empower also does that as well so they also give you loans um, so I took a loan um, because I'm I was in Canada and I was a permanent resident and this is part of why I'm just like Nigeria just to piss me up sometimes um, so the government here will give you money to go to school the government of Canada will say, oh yeah, if you want to go to school, no problem, we'll, we'll help yes, you smoke. I'm sorry. So, because they value it. They value oh, it. Sure. Yeah. And that's why I like, honestly, Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> when will we get Yes. Here? Yeah, go, you're paying yourself, you're still frustrated. I'm telling you. <laughs> so here, the government will give you small. So the government here gave me around 20. Um, 8K was dash. 8K is yours. The remaining 12K payback. Wow. Um, then, banks as well will give you money if you want to go to school okay. so banks here did it as well um so if you have you know if any of you guys is a permanent resident certainly consider that or you're a citizen maybe your father or your mother was a canadian citizen and you went back to nigeria then you want to come back because i have a friend who i literally did that and i was just like ah where were my own parents when people were moving to canada early. anyways every story so if you have that as well banks will also sponsor you as a citizen now like i already said that's for people that are here international prodigy empower and then schools will also sometimes give you loans and um, um scholarships as well so that's how you would fund it um, all right. Pro -DG empower your two best all right okay thank you very much for that to you all right so somebody's asking which mba specialization can one infuse technology in I think we already talked about it yeah, we already got it, yeah. MBA um, i also did entrepreneurship and innovation as a specialization i did it just because but it was my own by mistake actually because i was taking the tools <laughs> for it because I was interested in them. And then they're like, oh, you've done the specialization. I'm like, I have. <laughs> and then they gave me a degree. So, okay. Okay. So kind of, yeah, so that's what I did. Okay. Well, I'm asking, what factors would you recommend someone use to choose MBA specialization? I think that would be a personal business. It's, it's personal. Um, <laughs> is it that you mind know? That nobody cares. 
to be honest, what specialization you did, nobody really cares. Like literally, every time I have a job, oh, you have an MBA, cool. They don't even go and ask you, but nobody has asked for the degree. Like, let me see. My degree is behind me. And obviously, it's, it's blurred out now, but that right there is my degree. Nobody has asked me to see it. Nobody. So, you just know I have an MBA that nobody has asked to see it. Nobody, has, nobody cares. So, just do your MBA, finish it, and leave. Nobody cares about specialization. Nobody cares about. You just have an MBA. Cool. <laughs> so, keep that in mind. All right. Thank you. Uh, somebody is asking if you can share a sample of your CV statement of purpose and GMAT. He has mentioned the GMAT material care plan, right? Yeah, and plan. If you also, if you also oh. need to tell us, you can reach out to us. We have people who will put you yeah. through and uh, you could come up with great scores. Then, okay. statement of purpose. He has literally also mentioned everything yeah. he, he used in statement of purpose. I don't think we will be uh, willing to let out your statement of purpose. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll share with Dipo as well. Um, I'll right? share with Dipo. But okay, keep in so, mind, um, if you use my own, that's plagiarism. So you, sh- you really shouldn't use mine. You really should <laughs> yeah. not. Um, yeah, I mean, it has to be your words. have a, a template of what to use, but I, I don't know that it is helpful for you to, to use it. Because if you use it, uh, it's plagiarism and they'll catch you eventually. Especially if you apply to my school. They will, they will <laughs> keep track <laughs> of all the So they'll yeah. catch you to reuse it. Yeah, so I mean, I think that answer. So somebody is asking, in terms of income after studying MBA in Canada, and I relocate to Europe, will I still get the same salary income rate? Income yeah. rate. Okay, so um, this is now you're getting to a very technical piece, which is good. If okay. you are doing, if you're planning to go to Europe, you want to go to an MBA in Europe. Okay, if you want to go, if your plan is to go to Europe, do an MBA in Europe. If your plan is to move to Canada, do an MBA in Canada. Mm-hmm. If you want to be in the US, yeah. Now, the US and Canada usually are interchangeable. So, the trick to it is if you want to go to the US, Canada is cheaper. It's technically faster. You can become a permanent resident, you can become a citizen faster. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you some dubs. As a Canadian, I can get a job in the US without a visa right now. So, literally, if I get a job in Amazon tomorrow, all I have to do is go to the border and on this spot, they'll give me the work visa and I can work in the US. Okay? Um, if I went to the US, it would take me maybe five, six years to become a, a on green card. It would take way too long to get green card. And then, only then can you now stay in the US. Instead, if you go to, I go to Canada, did the thing in Canada, got your permanent resident, become a citizen, you then just cross the border and go to the US. So now I am eligible literally tomorrow. If I get a job in the US, I can move tomorrow. And I do it like literally because Canada and the US have a really good relationship and they always want Canadian citizens. So now I'm a citizen, I can cross the border easily. But again, if so now technically with my Canadian MBA, I can still go and work in the US anyways. So all that said, if you want to go to Europe, get your MBA in Europe because people are going to wonder, okay, why are you leaving Canada? Like, and why can't you know it, it's always very straight like and if i'm in europe i'm always going to apply to go in europe first before i apply like why am i going to skip everybody that's in europe to go to someone from canada unless there's a skill set that like literally only you can do in the world which is very rare mm-hmm. um usually think about it in europe they have and because of this the eu they can ha- apply they can take anybody from any country in europe without mm-hmm. any and this is something also nigeria pisses me off but i'm not trying to take this to a nigeria conversation you think about it, the way ECOWAS works, right? Okay. If you're in Nigeria, you can work in Ghana easily. If you're in Ghana, yeah. you can work in Nigeria easily. It's that same concept in Europe. So technically, in Europe, they can hire from any country. Okay. And if you're a Nigerian and you can hire a Ghanaian tomorrow, we, we don't use this very well in Africa and we're not serious. We need to get better about that. But yeah. in Europe, literally, if you're a French, they can hire you in Germany. If you're Belgium, they can hire you in Denmark. No questions asked. So okay. considering you're competing against every country in Europe, why would they hire you from Canada? So that's the other side to think about as well. So, so that means you have to know where you want to stay and then yeah, go I study will, there and just stay there. All right. I yeah, thank you. Okay, so somebody's asking again if Queen's University offers scholarship. Obviously, they do because they yes, got yes. the scholarship. Yes, yeah, so. Um, I know. Okay. <laughs> 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 so they are shooting their shot, though. They're asking if you are married, though. <laughs> <laughs> we have a girlfriend, so this person should leave me on LinkedIn. So you answer that question, please. All right, so I think, let me go. Let me go to some of the questions please, we had before. Thank you. <laughs> please, I'm very engaged. I don't mind them. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, so the person should should connect with you on LinkedIn. So you yeah, we'll talk about it. Take up the conversation over there. 
All right. So, okay. Someone is asking: Is GRE accepted in your school, like in place of GMAT? So, um, there's been from everybody that I have, um, the school has asked me to check. I think there's only been one time someone had a GRE instead of a GMAT option. Um, so it is possible. Okay. Now, I know in his case, um, the he his resume was outstanding. His recommendations were outstanding. Work experience was outstanding. So he had worked at British Tobacco, British American Tobacco. He had worked at um, Post Media, which is like a global media company. He had worked at Apple as well. So in his case, they waived it and did GRE. Um, but certainly, um, I know it's possible, but again, I'm pretty sure it's in rare circumstances, but I'm, I know it's possible. It's possible, but it's very usually rare. They, they, they don't advertise that it's an option, but um, I know they do this. Okay, thank you, Tolu. All right, so let's go to the questions we had before. This. Okay, somebody's asking for your Instagram handle, Tolu. <laughs> sure. Um, Instagram handle, A-E-R-O-M-A-T-I, um, Aromati. So actually I'll probably just that. type it in, so anybody else connects with you can ask to that. All right, so what challenges did you face during your application? Like recent challenges? Yes. Yeah. So challenges I did. Um, so I didn't have the best grades actually. Um, okay. So how do I do that? So engineering was hard, and if you remember, um, when I when I was in undergrad, I did not understand the weight of the money, right? Um, and so even though I was doing my best, don't don't get me wrong, I was doing my best. I was also working at the same time because I was an international student, and as you will find international fees are not the same as domestic fees okay so i was working so my dad was paying my tuition i was paying school fees but my upkeep rent food pocket money phone bill that was all on me okay and as i also shared canada is not necessarily cheap because everything is in dollars so if you are any money in naira and paying in dollars it's not easy and obviously um naira was slipping so i had to start working and so i was working um, full time in the summer, so when school is closed, I was working full time, and during school, I was working part time. So, with all that in mind, it's not easy to excuse me, it's not easy to balance everything. So, my grades were average, I would say. Um, so when it came time to apply, my grades went like I wasn't an early student that they would immediately they would take. So, so, when they looked at my resume, they're like, Oh, they told you your resume is good. Think you'd be a good fit. Then they looked at my grades, they're like, your grades are pretty bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, again, it's not like I was keep in mind, I've always been a sharp guy. And I mean, people and somebody who I went to secondary school with know this. Like, school was always very easy for me. Um, and so when my grades weren't good, it was the first time in my own life so that my grades are bad. Like, what was really this? So what when I when they, they initially rejected me actually. So Queens initially rejected me initially. Okay. And then I responded that okay, guys, guys, um, these are because they hadn't seen my entire application yet, because the way they do it, they'll do it on a rolling basis. So they'll see this one, they'll make a decision. Okay, next step, this one, next step, that one. So I told them to hold on to see the totality of my profile. Um, and I gave them all these reasons why I would be a perfect candidate and I would make them, you know, the best name since sliced bread. <laughs> And so they read it all and they were like, in fact, true, right? Like all these other things I had done, I was relatively young. I was in the country by myself. I was figuring out Canadian system by myself. I'm in school by myself and I'm also working by myself. Like my family is not here. So for a lot of you guys, my family is still in Nigeria. Like my brothers are still there. My dad is still there. My mom is still there. I'm here by myself. So it is possible to come here and become a big deal. It's very possible. So I told them all these things that, okay, look guys, I am going to be like, whether you like it or not, I'm going to be a success story in this country. It's now up to you to determine whether you want to be a part of it or not. <laughs> so you have to recognize that just because you are applying to these schools does not mean you are not um, a big deal. Just because you're in Nigeria does not mean you don't have something to offer. And I want to say this in front of everybody. Guys, just because you are coming from Nigeria, you are not inferior in any way. Quite frankly, you come here and you realize that guys here are not even that sharp. They are not that smart. Mm -hmm. And you'll be wondering all this, all this noise that we put in the media about how Africa is not this. You come in, but it's not even that big a deal. All of you are not that smart. So I'm telling you this. I want to encourage you, like, keep in mind, it is very possible. Considering everything we have been through in Nigeria, 
you come here, you'll be flourish. I'm telling you. Strong. That. I'm telling you. You will flourish here. And it's not yeah. because, like if you put in the work, you will flourish. There's no yeah. gar- like this one, I can guarantee it. Because government is not trying to stress you. Yeah, Police exactly. is not trying to stop you. Exactly. You will flourish. So much is removed from your life. I'm telling you this. When you come here, I'm telling you, you will All succeed. Right. So yeah. All right. Thank you, Tolu. Thank you. I somebody said thank you for the reformation. <laughs> Thank you. So, is money available for an MBA program in Canada? Yes, we've answered that. Can you work while studying for an MBA? Okay. Yes. Hey, so, that one is interesting to know. Okay. So, if you do a two-year program, okay, you have more time. So, the courses are spread over two years. You okay. can work part-time. You can. Okay. I wouldn't advise it, but you can. You can. There's time. If you do the one-year route like I did, you cannot. Yes. Because yeah. you literally, you are in school from 8 to 4. It's like a job. School is a job uh. at this point. <laughs> 8 to 4. You finish, you have assignments to do, and then sometimes you do the next day. So, where are you working inside it? Now, again, that's not to say you can't do it. Because I know people who were literally still, inside all these things, they were doing yeah, consulting. So, if you are consulting for other people, you can get paid. So, think I'm, some people are still doing it. So, me, I do not do it all, but it is possible. <laughs> Right. We have the power, so we can, we can we can combine everything together. But you just have to set your priorities right. So exactly. I mean, you can always work after the whole study. Get your. I'm like, telling you, your money will come. Don't worry. Finish it. You don't have to rush it. <laughs> All right. Okay. So another question says, what are the job opportunities after an MBA program? Or better still, what's the job market like for graduates? Okay. So, um depending on where you want to be in canada especially ontario the biggest jobs are in technology finance and consulting those are the three big places um anywhere else that you want to be in is a niche field so let's say you want to be in healthcare you can make that as well you can make healthcare work um, because like i said government here pays for healthcare so guaranteed you will make money like again um if you want to be in sports, sports is more limited. There are not that many sports teams in Canada. So, for example, there's only one major basketball team, like in the NBA in Canada, only one. So the whole country has only one. Um, there are four hockey teams, I think, four or five hockey teams in Canada. Keep in mind that hockey is there in Canada, but in the US is even more. So there's like 20 something in the US, 25 in Canada. So if you want to be in sports, it's limited. But quite frankly, as an MBA, you can work at any company because the MBA just teaches you to be a business person. And so you can work at really any business. Any business that needs someone to take stewardship of it and help you run it, you can work there. So opportunities, day, but usually it's the big companies that can afford an MBA grad. Um, and big companies are here. So obviously the IBMs are here, the Amazons are here, the Apples are here, Facebook is here. Um, we have, uh, what else? Google as well as also here. Um, some other companies, Shopify, that are big in Canada. Shopify is here. The government of Canada is a big player, like literally. Just go to plug in. If you work for the government of Canada, literally, you get paid to do absolutely nothing. Oh my gosh. Ah! <laughs> you get paid to do nothing. Literally, work that will take private maybe a week. You can use two months in the government and just pay your salary that two months. Mm. Government just doesn't make sense. They pay, they pay stupid for doing nothing. Just, <laughs> but again, you won't. I mean, you won't be excited by your work, but you'll be paid. So balancing again. So if you have you a family, have you have to know what's important. No, so usually what people do is they will work hard in their young ages, 30, 40, and then in their fifties they move to government because government. So they just relax, get the money. Down. You know, government will pay you to be directly. You'll be, you'll be getting paid. Nobody will disturb you. Last yeah. time they say, Oh, we'll do so. Okay, initiative that will take one year. Okay, take yeah, time. Still I need. <laughs> okay, so they, can't, they won't fire you that much. So, all that said, um, Canada does, does not need people. As you can imagine, Canada is bigger than the US by land size, but has mm-hmm. 10% of the population. So, we do need people here. Yeah. Um, and opportunities are available. It's just a matter of deciding what field you want to be in and what field will excite you. Um, I personally recommend technology because that one pays the most. That's my recommendation. But all of them pay equally well. Um, you'll be fine. You'll not be hungry. Like, rent will not be a problem. So you'll never be hungry. Just figure out the field you want to be in. And quite frankly, uh, last thing I want to add on that. If you pick a field that you like, 
you will out earn a field that is paying more but you don't like it. because whenever you like something it will show on your face it will just show it will show and because it shows on your face people want to work with you whereas you go to a field you don't really like and you're just doing it because it's a job sooner or later this one is just like that of course again just because the field doesn't pay as much as technology doesn't mean you can't make more so if you like and you are a superstar in healthcare you will out earn coming to technology and being average so keep that in mind weigh your options well all right thank you tolu so what other business related programs are available for students who didn't graduate with a first class or second class or part of your first degree so again to clarify i didn't have first class and second class i didn't have that i did not so oh. mba is still an option um and like i said already literally my degree is now in fact maybe i should actually change the blurring in the background literally um now my degrees are only for background so let me let me turn it off so you okay. can see that literally i only use why is this going on hold on sorry so literally literally my degrees are now only for background vibes nobody will check nobody will check, nobody will check. i'm telling you this so all you gotta do is um get into whatever masters you want to study um it is easier of course if you have a first class second class it's easy sure but if you don't you can still qualify for an mba you can still qualify for a master's of international business that's another degree as well um masters of marketing is usually a, a good one as well uh marketing management is, is the name of that one um master of entrepreneurship and innovation is another degree as well i know um we'll do that one at queens um there is masters of business of uh, uh, data analytics so data is now a big deal in a lot of businesses yeah. so if you want to do data and you like numbers that's okay. a big deal as well look at that um finance hr you can do an hr degree those options are available as well um okay. yeah so a lot of again keep in mind it's not only masters you can do you can also do a postgraduate degree yeah exactly i was going to say that you know for students that are coming from nigeria you can't apply with your tutor directly it might have been easy for you because you got your bsc there yeah. For coming from Nigeria with a tutu, you can I don't think you can directly I mean some schools or very few. Yeah. Some yeah. some schools will, will take it, but uh, again you okay. can also do post grad and then if you want to do if master is killing you after the yeah, post grad, you can click. Exactly. So, but your post grad is also a, a huge possibility. You don't have to do MBA. Like I said, nobody has checked. Like literally, I've worked two jobs, okay. I've gotten five offers between the MBA and now, not one person. I'm telling you, not with one. I said, oh yeah, come and show it if you prove it all that you went there. <laughs> all right. Okay, thank you, Tulu. I want to see if we have other questions. Okay, so somebody was asking, like, do they really check the last two years of your study? Yes. Okay, so they do. Um, so usually they won't use all four because if you think about it, when you're entering undergrad, um, you are like, what, 16, 17, 18? At the most, at the most, usually, is on average. Of course, people are older, some people are much younger. Okay. Um, so on average, you're 18. What did you know you are doing in undergrad at 18? So mm -hmm. when you have that qualify a 20-something-year-old person, 29, 30-something, like you were 18 yeah. at that time, usually. So usually, they'll use the last two. Okay. Um, and then, or if if you if it's if you don't even want them to use your whatever, you can always use work experience. If you've been working for for more than five years. They don't even bother with undergrad. They don't even bother. Like honestly, it's too far behind. Like who cares? Um, and a lot of times, undergrad, you may not even realize how important things are. You're probably just playing around, having fun, catching vibes, doing next year, yeah. going to turn up. So sometimes, <laughs> they, so sometimes they don't even bother with, with the, the grades. So like in my own case, clearly when I was in school, there was a reason why my own grades were not that great. Okay. Um, and so you can always explain. You can always explain your degrees. You can really explain okay i didn't have a one one for whatever reason you know i was doing this i was doing that um i was running a business and school didn't really seem like a big deal at the time and and that business for example now has become however many millions of naira and so now i'm actually interested in doing an mba so that i can benefit my business then they're going right. and it makes sense because they're like who cares clearly you did not know school you didn't care about school or say for example hey you know my family was going through something my dad my dad died i had a friend who tried his dad died in school he had to stop school for a while um so things like that explain reasons 
And again, your situation is always personal. But again, if you want to share that, very important. Any information is pertinent. Don't don't worry about oh they're going to pity me. Am I dear? This is this is life. Or, this is money here. This is the rest of your life. About to be making plenty. <laughs> it's no pity. It's the reality of the situation. Don't feel bad. And I know a lot of Nigerians we do this thing where like oh I don't want anybody to pity me. I don't want to tell the truth. This is what happened. This story. is story. Tell your story. It is okay. This is Canada as well. Nobody's going to say oh. That Nigerian that their father died, nobody will say that to you. In fact, your your, your situation will, be, will remain personal. Personal. Try to share it with your teammates. They will never share with anybody else. So again, if something has happened, you've had something traumatic in your life, your uncle died, you had to move, you were fleeing something, you had to change locations. Say it, right. explain it, and it'll be fine. All right, thank you. So allegedly you're asking that you recommend schools with easier admission process. Just kindly reach out to us and we'll help you with that. We have over 300 partner schools and the admission process and as much as you meet the requirements, not an issue. So I hope I've answered that question. So somebody else is asking, how many years work experience do we need for an MB course in Canada? So usually um, they want more than two, usually. Um, so if you have more than two, usually then work experience is not an issue. But if you have less than two, then you have to explain why you're trying to do an MBA so quickly. Keep in mind also, the other side of the MBA is they always do the reports, like I said earlier. They publish their GMAT ranking, they publish how quickly the class got jobs, the kind of salaries the, the yeah. class got. Yeah. So certainly, as much as they want to accept students, they also want students that can get jobs. So that's the why when I say like, you have in your letter, remember how I said, you have to say, okay, you are beneficial for me, I am beneficial for you. You have to find a way to justify that. If you are saying, I don't have work experience, but I want to do MBA. Okay, so how? what's your plan for getting a job? Because sure, we'll do some of the work for you, but what's your own plan? So if you can show that despite not having a lot of work experience, I can still get this level of jobs, then sure. If you can justify, say for example, you've been a genius your whole life. You only, like literally, you've got, you've got three, literally, I met somebody had three masters already. Like, I didn't have MBA, mad Um. <laughs> So we would do that. There was another girl that I, I, I met. She had done a separate master's in science and she had gone to dental school. She was come back to do MBA. I'm like, for God's sake, why? But again, everybody had their own reasons. Some people want to own their own dental shop. Some want to have yeah. their own dental clinic. So everybody had their own reasons. But if you can justify why you want to do certain things, why not? So if you have less than two years of experience, you have to justify how you will be able to get the kind of jobs you want to get after the MBA. It's not just doing the MBA, it's the long-term planning. After the MBA, I'm going to do XYZ thing and the MBA is going to help me get there. So. Hi. Thank you, Tolu. Yes, yeah, so somebody is asking. Today is asking, how can you go about what what do you have to say about studying computer science with agricultural background? I don't think that's a question for you. We're talking about MBA here. I think um today please kindly reach out to us on Instagram and the uh, book consultation. We have a team who would help you and get through that. But just to say something about that, if you're if you want to study computer science and you have a agricultural background, then I think you should pro- probably have um, some work experience in, that is related to computer science to show you okay so this is why you want to change and all of that or you before that attended so this can you reach out to also on instagram thank you so okay so yesterday is asking is it all schools on Illiwi that requires three maths for an MBA? well not all schools depending on your years of experience and other related um, factors so it all depends i mean it's um, peculiar to you depends on your your situation and your years of experience and the school so some schools will give that okay so we're going to waive GMAT if you can provide this and this so if you want to apply kindly reach out to us and then we'll then evaluate your your documents and let you know what is applicable to you all right so Tolu somebody's asking again yes. okay what schools and them um, locations in Canada are more likely to give funding or admissions. Which ones have the lowest competition? I don't know which ones give which ones are the lowest competition. Um just obviously naturally we already know the, the top ones will be the most competitive um naturally. Uh, yeah. Um in terms of other schools you may want to consider. So in terms of location, maybe I'll give you location I think that might help. So in terms of location, Ottawa is a hidden gem. It's the capital of the country. Think of it like going to study in Abuja. Think of it like that. Okay. The schools there are not 
ranked as high as, for example, all the others in Toronto. Okay. But if you go there, you can you will find a job. Um, they don't cost as much either. Ottawa is a relatively cheap con- um, place to be compared to Toronto. Um, and so Ottawa is a good place to go. That's one. So any school in Ottawa, so University of Ottawa or Carlton, any of those two, you should be fine. If you consider New Brunswick as well, New Brunswick is one of the cheapest places to live in Canada. It's just like, like, so when I look at the price, I'm like, is this, are they using Monopoly money? Because I'm not just <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's just so cheap to live there. And you like, I mean, don't get me wrong, Canadian to Naira will, will still be a fact, though. But well, okay, compared so to that. Toronto, like, in fact, you are okay. <laughs> now, keep in mind that well, New Brunswick is further from a lot of, you know, Toronto and what have you. So keep that in mind. Um, but again, you are there to study anyways, so you will start there. Fewer people, but they're nicer people because, you know, people are always welcoming. Agree. Calgary is another place that I also like. Um, the cost is relatively low, um, it's maybe on par with Ottawa as well. And maybe it's nice, it's only one now. Um, Calgary is also a huge oil and gas place, so if you're into oil and gas, you, know, you have you have, you have oil and gas from Nigeria, you can also do that in Canada. That's where oil and gas is in the country. Um, and now they're also adding some tech to it as well. So Calgary is another place as well. That's a hidden gem. People don't talk about it a lot. But Calgary, Ottawa. Um, my school as well was in Kingston, which is not in Toronto. But we were close enough to Toronto, but separate story. I don't recommend if you are worried about cost. Um, because Kingston is, is a boring place to be. Okay? It's a boring place to be. So usually what's happening is you, have, you end up having to travel a lot out of the school to do anything. So even though it is cheap to be there, everything else you want to do is outside the place. Outside the place. So yeah, um, so just think about that as well. It's a great school, like I said already, and they will connect with everything. Sometimes they will even pay for your travel, by the way, I should plug that in. But um, that aside though, if you're looking for a good place to be competitive, Calgary, Ottawa, um, those are the Top two that come to mind immediately. If I think about it, man, I'm sure maybe more will come to my mind later. Um, oh, yeah. Those are the two I would play. Okay. But New Brunswick, oh yeah, by the way, New Brunswick is also another one. New Brunswick, um, Halifax, Nova Scotia, Halifax is another one. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Tolu. I think we're okay. wrapping up now. So, I mean, all these other questions you answered them in between. What ranking? Okay, so somebody's saying, does the ranking of your school matter when recruit, recruiting post MBA? So not really. Um, we, we hire when people hire, they hire people. They don't hire ranking. Uh, it is easier for a top-ranked school because they just have the funding anyways. But nobody's going to check. Okay, I'm going to hire the guy from the okay. next school, so the one hundred and five. Nobody's going to check. Um, you have an MBA. You have an MBA. Can you do the job? You can. Great. We'll bring your board. Um, we hire people. They don't hire rankings. So I wouldn't worry about ranking. As again, as long as you did the work um that's what that matters keep in mind i also want to add this caveat just because you go to a top school doesn't mean you're guaranteed there's a guy uh who came from india in my team he used to play in the indian soccer league he actually was a professional football player um this guy literally in terms of sports he loves sports does everything but in terms of going to school he did not like school at all and it always i was always very concerned as to why he did decide to do an mba did no work at all. Did zero work, like literally nothing at all. So that kind of person compared to someone who's gone from Nigeria goes to any other school that is clearly interested, you will beat him every time. Every time. You will beat him every time. So it is not really by the school. It's not really, and I want to add that caveat, it's not at all. It, has, it is easier, the school will make it easier, but it is not by school. If I had gone to any other school, I would still be in my own mind anyways. It's just, you know, me, I decided I wanted to take a different route um but again i don't i don't think it's because i went to queens that i'm where i am i was going to go where i was going anyways i just wanted to go to queens okay thank you thank you so much to it's been an amazing time with you i wouldn't know okay so at this point i think we'll just wrap up because questions will keep coming in but we can't <laughs> take it all so we'll just wrap up for further questions please kindly reach out to me and um so let's gonna drop this LinkedIn. Have you dropped it? Your LinkedIn? Yeah, it's coming right. in a, a quick second. So um, all right. One second. Okay, so you can connect with him, and then if you have further questions about schools, how to cover your applications, and all of that, we at Lewe Education are ready to 
help you through that and then get you into school as soon as possible. All right, so I would like one or two persons to just share with us, unmute and share with us. Okay, so what are the two, what are the things you're taking away from this session? What have you learned? And um, just share with us. We hope well, your time here has been worthwhile. So we just want to get a feedback from one or two persons. Kindly unmute and just take one or two responses before we call it this. So who wants to share? Who wants to share with us what they've gotten from the session? Anybody? I think maybe, maybe they might, because just because sound might be bad maybe in the chat instead. Okay. Um, yeah, I think in the chat might be easier, just because... Um, all right, I'm saying I'm saying something. All right, hello, who's speaking? Thelma. Thelma, sorry for the background beeping. And um, I just want to appreciate to thank you for this um, session. And yes, I was able to get a number of things. Mm-hmm. One being that the ROI definitely rewards it in the end. You just have to put in the work now. And definitely the fact that he mentioned that we are smart and we should just do what we have to do. <laughs> yeah, smart, just smart. Doing the work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you. Thank you so much for the feedback, Kelma. All right, thank you, Ella BC, too. I can see your comments in the chat box. Thank you guys so much. This was very enlightening. Thank you for coming in. So that have been, I mean, so that have not been interesting. If we had to do it alone, so we appreciate your presence too. Thank you for joining in. Any other person before we wrap up? All right, and while waiting for somebody else to talk, so we'll be giving. Um, we have a so a freebie for the first three people who join in, and I hope they are still here. Though, and um, that was them: um, Fola, Shade, Ojo, Ima, and then Kelma. Ima. Thank you. You're welcome. So, by giving you a free consultation, a free consultation session, if you don't know if you're ready for your application, so kindly reach out to us on Instagram and just let them know that you're one of the participants that got the um, giveaway from the Zoom meeting today for Lashade, Ima, and Thelma. So, any other person wants to give us a feedback before we call it a day so that Tolu can embark on the strength? You're welcome, Ima. You're welcome. You're welcome, um, Falashadi. Kindly reach out to us on Instagram, please, so that you can and state is that you're one of the winners. Thank you. So, Tolu, any other thing? Any other thing for us? I want to add, um, I think. Yeah, no, I think I think the, the key thing is to also remember that like um, when you're coming, a lot of what you need to remember is why you're coming. Um, because as, as you go through an MBA program and even if, when you embark on any journey that is long and tough, you okay. will sometimes want to stop. You'll be like, honestly, why am I doing all these things? Um, I, I, I highly recommend you write it down now. Okay. Um, whatever your reason, whatever your why is, I highly recommend you write it down and somewhere okay. you can always see it. When I was going through my MBA and when Queens rejected me, I printed the rejection email. I personally, I printed it okay. and I left it on, um, I, I, put it right, I put one copy right beside my computer and then I put another one on the door. So that literally whenever I was working okay. and I was like, I'm tired. I was like, these people in their life, they will regret <laughs> even thinking that they can tell me no. So I printed it, even as I was doing the GMAT, I was doing everything else. Printed it, and I always had it. And it was one of those things where, like, literally, I use that motivation because I'm like, in my life, like, literally, there's never been a chance in my life where anybody has told me I, we don't want to attack people. Like, yeah. no. What? Mm-hmm. That got to you. How dare you? Who are you? Hey, who are you? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was my own wife. My own wife was like, I'm going to show these people because there's no chance that they should ever think just because great, somebody is not capable. Um, and so I took that personally. So I put it everywhere. And so literally, there'll be days where I don't want to do anything. And I'll see that and I'll get angry again. Let's go. Um, you need you need motivation because it's a long, tough slog. You see, like, if you are, if you come, when you come to Canada, depending on where you are in Canada, there'll be winters that will get up to minus 15. This is colder than a freezer. Like literally, you can defrost things from outside in your freezer. Hmm. 
So there will be days where we, and if you go to places like, for example, Manitoba, because I think I saw somebody say Manitoba, Manitoba is okay. terrible, like minus 30 out there. Mm. So if you are doing minus 30 and you say come to class, 8 a.m. Mm. in minus 30. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You don't want to do all of that and not see something. So you want to get something for it. So I highly recommend you write it down now because later yeah. on, when you finish on the other side, like literally, as I said, once I'm done here, I'm going to travel. Mm-hmm. And you're like, enjoying it. It's easier now to be like, ah, it was worth it for that time. Yeah. yeah. Hey, God. You mean <laughs> we are going to minus 15 for school? Imagine. Please, please, you need motivation. You need support. If it's that you ask a friend to check in on you every week, every month, set it up now. You don't want to get into it. And then I'm telling you this. When you start, it's easy to say, I want to do MBA. It's good to make money. On the other side, you give up if you are not. If you are not, if your eyes not strong you, enough. You will. Give, I'm telling you, you give up. But when you finish it, you look and you're like, oh, nah. <laughs> you're smiling the way you're.